Okay, we're on our way. Okay, we have a situation. Bacteria are trying to invade our territory. We need to find them and kill them as soon as possible. I suggest that we use herbs and spices. We have ten at our disposal, but I don't know which one is most effective. Okay, let's go and find out in the lab. So, before starting our experiment, the first thing that we need to do is we need to know our enemies. What do you know about bacteria? Well, I know that bacteria are single-celled organisms which live everywhere. They live in the bread we eat, the soil where plants grow, and even inside us. Some bacteria can, can be helpful, like in the making of compost, cheese, and yogurt. However, some can be harmful, like tuberculosis and salmonella, because they can cause diseases. So, why did you suggest to use herbs as a prevention for the bacteria? Well, herbs and spices have been used for centuries by our ancestors, not only for their abilities to enhance our own life food, but also for their antimicrobial properties. Good. Now that we've gathered all the information, we can start up our experiment. Let's go. So, what do we have to do first? First, we need to prepare the agar. This is a jelly like substance obtained from algae, which will be used as a cultural medium for the bacteria to feed on and reproduce. Preparation of agar. In order to prepare it, 14.4 grams of agar are added to 720 milliliters of hot water and the solution is stirred and heated until all the agar dissolves. The water agar solution is then poured into the bottom half of the sterilized petri dish, just enough to form a layer over the bottom of the dish. The petri dish is closed to prevent any airborne bacteria from contaminating the experiment. Dishes have to be set aside until the agar cools and hardens. Then when it hardens, bacteria may be introduced. And how is this going to be carried out? It can be carried out simply by grabbing a swab, take a sample of bacteria by rubbing it against the mouth, and then spread it along the agar, just like this. How are we going to test which herb or spice is the best thing to prepare for bacteria? Well, we have 10 herbs or spices under investigation. These are paprika, sage, cinnamon, cloves, coriander, rosemary, ginger, oregano, mint, and mustard. For each herb or spice, an extract is first prepared. Then a filter paper dipped in the extract is placed on the surface of the agent. The petri dishes are then labeled and sealed. Apart from the petri dishes containing the herb or spice extract, a control with the paper dipped in distilled water is also prepared. In order to do this, 150 milliliters of distilled water are added to 15 grams of ground dried plant and the mixture is stirred and heated for 20 minutes. The mixture is then filtered and extract is obtained. A pair of forceps are placed in a Bunsen burner flame in order to decontaminate them. These are then used to pick the filter papers, dip them in the herb or spice extract and then placed on the agar jelly in the petri dishes. Each petri dish is then closed, sealed, labeled and placed in an incubator.
How are the results going to be recorded? If the herbivores spoil stops the bacteria from growing, there will be an area around the filter paper where the bacteria does not grow. We can calculate this and we call this the zone of inhibition. The size of the zone of inhibition will indicate the ability of the herbivore spice to kill the bacteria. The larger the zone is, the more effective the herb or spice will be. The size of the zone can be calculated by measuring the diameter at three different angles and then taking the average. Readings have to be taken for several days. So, have we got any results? Yes, sir. It has been found that cloves are the best spice in order to kill bacteria. Excellent. So, not that we have got the results, we have a battle to fight. Alone in spite of the fact that some people still think that they know him.